Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stage, Jackie Nespral, with the Honorable Andrea Villagran of the Republic of Guatemala. Hello. I'm back. So in honor of International Women's Day and continuing with the theme of women making a difference, making an impact, we just uh, heard from Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Lavin Cava. Uh, but there are people like the mayor and like our next guest who are making consequential decisions in high-level positions in Latin America and the Caribbean. So we want to highlight some of those women leaders throughout the region sometimes in male-dominated positions. We will discuss some of the most pressing issues facing Latin America and why representation in leadership positions is so important. So joining me now on stage is Andrea Villagran from the Congress of, uh, the, of the Republic of Guatemala. Gracias. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for the invitation. And also, I want to thank um, the McCain Global Institute, which, is, uh, which I'm part of for the McCain Global Leaders. And I'm also representing that here. And being a, a Congresswoman is an honor to join this panel. So how has representation of women in leadership positions evolved in the region over the past few decades? And what factors would you say have contributed to women getting into those leadership positions? Well, first, I want to let you know that I am actually the youngest congresswoman in Guatemala, and I see that in the region. Um, yeah, that's thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And I can see that in the region, we have done a lot of progress. We have seen more, even more women in those positions of decisions and high level vice president, presidents, and member of the parliament. Well, we still have a lot to be done. I think there's a, we have to have a lot of commitment because in my case, as a young leader, um, as a woman young leader, I have the compromise because we, of, of the women that fight for me to have this position, for all the, the women to have been recognized as a citizen, to be able to participate in politics, to be able to vote, um, we have that responsibility. So when women leaders are in this position, we have to open the gates and be able to promote for more women to be in this position and to ensure that the rights that are, are, we have earned and fight for those get guaranteed. Because what we see right now is that we still have a lot of problems in lack of opportunities, in um, lack of education. As we have a lot of problems in access to health system or health or care system, um, reproductive uh, policies as well. We still have a battle to, we, that we have to do as a region. We have seen that there are some other countries that have more development uh, policies and on laws taking care of the women's rights. But uh, some other countries, like my country, Guatemala, we still have a lot of problems in giving girls and young women opportunities. Did you feel discrimination moving up the the line of command as a woman and because of your age? Yes, totally, we face that. I think every woman here can say that we have faced this in every, any type of a society. And, but we are in these positions that are more um, kind of a, from a look for a man. They, we, they see it like we are taking out spaces and we have to be able to let them know that women, we are part of the, the society. And it's a democracy value that as we are part of the society, we have to take decisions of what matters to us in the national problems. So we have to be in those places taking the decision for us because the, uh, if we don't have well representation, some others will take decisions about our problems, about sometimes about our bodies as well. Once you get to that position, how can you ensure that there's more equitability, that more inclusiveness in those higher ranks of government? Well, I think in that case, we have to, I mean, we have to fight for the, the rights that we earn. We have to maintain, to, we have to promote, we have to advocate for policies for, to promote equality. And also being realized that a lot of girls, a lot of young girls are looking at us 
and we have to be role models. We have to try to do the best to show them that they can also be here, that they can do whatever they want. If they want to go in the science field, they can go ahead and do it. If they want to go to the polit political world, they can do that as well. That there's no barrier, that they can do whatever they want. And we as a woman, a little woman, we have to prove that. And it's kind of a hard time sometimes because obviously we have discrimination and I think there is a lot of sexist and stereotypes about that. But it's a, I think it's a constant fight that we have to maintain because we are here to honor not just the people that we represent, but the honor the fight, the historical fight for women and also to open for the, the ones that are, that are coming after us. Obviously we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. So what would you say are some of the most pressing issues that are facing women and girls in that region? Well, in the region, I will say that it's violence against women. Mm. We can see this in many types, um, but this affects all, girl, all women in all ages, from domestic violence, including also um, human trafficking. We see that a lot. Um, sexual assaultment, har harassment. We saw a lot of the harassment as well. But in Guatemala, we have a huge problem, which is that we have a lot of girls that are pregnant, that are being, becoming mothers. So we have a lot of girls that are taking care of other girls. And that's so sad because that's, sadly, that's a political decision. If we don't have the policies to prevent violence, if we don't have the education system that works well, if we don't have a system that protects the girl, we will have this type of situation which are, is basically showing how bad is the situation in the region, having girls taking care of other girls. Girls just should be playing, girls should be doing, uh, enjoying their, their child, not being mothers. So. It seems like it comes down to education and educating and, and making these girls aware. So what is, at least in Guatemala, what are you doing in order to educate these girls about that? In Guatemala, we have, we have tried to pass some bills. I have presented a lot of bills regarding that, like um, sex education, for example, um, to promote reproductive uh, programs for younger women that sometimes they don't have the information. In Guatemala, we have 60% of the popularity which lives under the line of poverty uh, that have not have access to education or health system. And it's, I think it's a problem about development. Also, they have, we have to educate um, not just women, I mean, the society, the entire society, that violence is not okay, that we cannot normalize violence. And that's a problem because they, in Guatemala, it's like violence is kind of normal, but it is not, and it should be not considered like that. And that's a, um, we have to take care in a, from an educational point of view in order to prevent, because the justice system can work, but it's never going to be able to cap all those uh, rapists or all those uh, men who are doing the things wrong badly, because it's a cultural thing that we have to change. Obviously, you're in government. What can women in the private sector do to help the situation in Guatemala and, and these little girls? I think everyone in any part of the society can contribute. Um, I would say that they have to be help other women to show open spaces, to show that women can be in those places. In the private sector, can help those initiatives and, or help the policies that are already working. Um, the, the main problem is about budgeting and everything, so investments um, can help a lot as well. But in private sector, I will say that it's also at another spot where women are also being discriminated. And to be able to open the spaces in the, in the private sector, I mean in the main table, that will also help the entire movement and the entire process for the women to get a more equity or equality system. If you can talk about your, your personal story and how you started and what happened for you to get to the position that you are today. Well, I become from um, the countryside of Guatemala. 
and the countryside of Guatemala, I live in a small village. In that village, we didn't have access you know, to health system or educational system. Um, my family decided to move to the main city because obviously we were wanting to job, have job opportunities for my mom and my dad, and they wanted me to provide me a good education. And it was, for me, it was interesting when I travel every weekend to see my family, which was in the countryside, and see the differences. And I think that made me um, questioning and generate a conscious about what was, because what was this injustice thing happening to my family in the countryside and why I have access to better education in the main city of the capital of Guatemala. And after that, I decided just to study political science just to understand how the system works. And I think I get involved in, I participate in the student movement at the beginning, then in the fight against corruption in Guatemala in 2015, it was huge in that time. And I work with young people and I started with the student movement, uh, asking the government, so it was like a change to be to pass from the protest to the actions to the prop, to the propositions, you know, and um, f following those causes that sometimes are bigger than ourselves and understand them as we are part of the process. I think it was something that moves me, and that I have a privilege because in Guatemala, getting education, well education, or getting into university is a privilege. It becomes a privilege, and I think that does have to be. It doesn't have to be a privilege. It has to be a right for everyone. Everyone should have that, and so I think that I have to use this privilege to make it for all of them, especially for women. So now that I go back to my family uh, house and in the countryside on the weekends, I, unfortunately, I'm still seeing that there, the school, the public school that there is over there, they don't have water, they don't have electricity. So we have a lot to do yet. And we, have, we need more people to, more, more women also, to be in these positions and try to make the changes and understand that we are just part of the process of something better. You talk about representation and you have a platform right now yeah. to make a difference, right? And you talk about education being a privilege and it should be a right. So how do you move forward in that direction so that it becomes a right for every young woman in Guatemala? Well, I think it's, I keep fighting for it. This is my second term in Congress. I was elected when I was 25 years old. Mm -hmm. I am 31. And um, this is my second term. I'm running for the third one. But in Congress, everything is about numbers. And if we don't have the majority, we cannot pass the bills. If, and we're still, I mean, the good ones like this, uh, we're still being not that much. We need to grow. Um, the last um, period, when I was my first time in Congress, we were around 15, over 158, that we're fighting for these causes. Now, uh, we are around 25. We grow a little bit, but we grow. And we have to con and understand the context of the situation because Guatemala is a very corrupted country. When most of the politicians are involved in corruption, involved in organized crime, or narco traffic, and those include violence against women as well. Everything is, is linked. So in the, in the way that we can make more people that wants to make things differently, that wants to make their changes. And in the way that we can grow inside the Congress or inside the government with this type of view, with a view of state, in that way we can be able to do the changes. But now we have to keep building that. Well, we thank you for your leadership and good luck to you in the future where we can see a lot of things happening for you in Guatemala. Thank you very much, Jackie. Congresswoman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.